Hello and welcome to today's video. So at this time we're going to be taking a look through another batch of vintage penguin paperbacks. Now these all need a good clean up, a brush up, remove any marks inside and generally get them looking as good as possible before they go back into my main collection. So that's exactly what we're going to be having a look at today. So sit back, relax and let's take a look. Okay then, so we're starting off with this one, which is number 624 in Penguin's main series, The Soul of Malaya. And this is actually a really, really nice copy, this one. Yeah, very, very nice. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, this one, however, um, has got a very faded spine. Um, now, this particular batch that we're looking at, they all... When do these date from? Yeah, 1948. So they're late 1940s. And um, some of these I've picked up off sort of book dealers over the years. Others I've found sort of in the wild. And the copies aren't quite as uh, nice as I perhaps would prefer. However, um, I have also fairly recently picked up quite a batch of upgrades in this particular run. So I've got um, about six or seven Agatha Christie's and I've got some from the main just general run here, which I had noted as sort of copies that I wanted to upgrade. Um, so hopefully, although I'm going to see a few lower grade copies, I'll get them looking as good as possible because they're going to go into my, my swaps box. So my, uh, I've got a little box going on, uh, more than about five boxes, in fact, full of books, which uh, I clear once every few months. I have a little clearance video of all my sort of duplicate books, and uh, I have that over on my other channel. So if you're in the market for some vintage paperbacks yourself, and I generally do knock them out much, much cheaper than um, you would find them online, um, do please go over to my other channel and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. I am actually planning one of these. Probably towards the second or third week of January is going to be my next sort of um, book clearance video. And, uh, and it is very much on a first come, first serve basis. And if you want the best shout, um, I will definitely signpost it so you've got a chance to get in nice and early but they do prove very, very popular. Some of these got the old prices in. Um, the sales videos do prove very popular indeed um, because the books, you know, the old paperbacks start at just a pound a pop and at the very, very cream of the crop goes for about a five or so. So um, I do have a few books a little bit more than that um, and I'll generally put those sorts of books up onto eBay um, and I do have a link to my eBay auctions in the description uh, down below. So, uh, but I don't try, I try and list as little on eBay as possible, basically, because I'm not a real fan of the platform much these days. Death of Mary Dizel. Um, so obviously once we've been through these, they're not going to need any sort of polish because these are, uh, paper covers and these can't be polished, not in the slightest bit, but I see a few of these. Like this one's got a very sort of like it's like a ghosting of a price from maybe when it was in a dealer's catalogue or in a second hand bookshop. Certainly this particular period, this sort of from you know, once the war was over, the books didn't really get that scarce, with the exception of the crossword books, which are always difficult to find. And uh, thankfully I was missing three crossword books around this sort of period between sort of number 500 and uh, 750, something like that. And I've managed to track all three of them down, which I'm really sort of pleased about. Ford, Maddox, Ford. But so far, we've not had any sort of major work to do, have we? Just a few price stickers and we can, we can handle that without too much incident at all. Mr. Petri. In there, Bill up. Now this one, I think I'll re-glue the bottom of the spine there where it's just got nicked, which happens now and again. But, I mean, some of you might think, well, I've had these penguin books so long, 
surely they must have all been cleaned at some point. And in actual fact, that's not the case because I've had them so long. Um, a lot of these have never ever been cleaned. They've just come, you know, like that one that we had earlier on with the 250 on. That's one that I've obviously had for years and years. And that 250 is from a dealer's catalogue of some sort, you know. So it's never ever been sort of through this sort of treatment. And that is true with every single collection that I've got really. So obviously some of it we've now done and dusted and we've got to the bottom of it and they've all been cleaned and tidied as best as possible. But there's so much that hasn't been done on the main Penguin and Pan series. And that's mainly where we're gonna see um, improvements sort of going forward, you know? So yeah, I mean, it's better than it was. It's not gonna get any worse, but still, nicked at the top and bottom of the spines there first or oh, second famous trials book here now i am just down to uh having four books left to complete my set of first 1000 penguins now which is pretty pretty good to be in that situation so I'm hoping next year brings uh, at least another one or two my way. That's an absolutely minter, but it's got some pencil in the front there. So quite a bit of pencil as well. I wonder what that was doing in such a, a mint book, but they didn't do, Penguin didn't do many of these sort of grey uh, gray covered ones. But thankfully, my little soft rubber here is making swift work of it. Yeah, they wrote quite, they wrote quite firmly, whatever all that meant. But it's come out okay and it's left the book nice and clean now maybe they were just marking a couple of pages on it or something like that this is a bit of a tatty old one but it's okay i'm not looking for per perfection on these books you know now this one's definitely got a bit of bottom Bottom of the spine, that's going to need gluing. And it's got a little pencil mark inside again. So my suspicion is this has come through the second hand market at some point. It's just a little bit there at the bottom of the spine. So just slide that in there. Um, I did have someone suggest that rather than using this screwdriver method, which is, you know, it's screwed, but it works. They suggested I, uh, I try, um, like, um, a dental pack, you know, you can get sort of like little picks and not like lock picking, but literally for, for dentists, which have got much, much smaller, like, um, ends on them. And I thought, well, yeah, fair enough. But I mean, this was just what I had to hand. I've got loads of these little screwdrivers. And I thought, well, I'll just sort of stick with that really, you know, because it works. But I know where they're coming from. And generally the books go at the top and bottom of the spines when they've been read and reread lots and lots of times. That's generally what causes it. And, you know, that's part and parcel. That's what they were designed for. So you can't get too hit up about it. But this was a very great period for Penguin. I think the books look really, really nice, particularly when they're mint. Uh, they do really uh, stand up well.
when you think these ones that we're looking at here are all basically over 70 years old. It sort of puts it in perspective a little bit, doesn't it? But they're still incredibly, incredibly collectible, these penguin books. And it seems even more so. I mean, I don't know if that's because of the rise of the internet and people have seen other collectors share in their collections. And it's sort of got people really into, you know, building their own libraries, because that's certainly, it seems, what's what's happened to me. I, I've seen many more people come into the hobby now. And uh, obviously some of the old collecting stalwarts, people who collected for many, many years and formed the, uh, the Penguin Collector Society, is sadly no longer with us. Um, but that is the circle of life. There we are. A little two pound here. So, so far we're not doing too badly. A couple, a couple of glue repairs, quite a few with the, uh, the old pencil marks inside. Uh, this is one of the ones I got recently. This is one which, with crossword books, you expect a few crosswords to have at least been attempted. It's usually the first few, which is the case with these ones. I'm not going to go through and um, rub out all of that, even though they've been done in pencil. I just, when I, with crossword books, in all honesty, they are what they are. So I generally just leave them exactly as is. This one's had a few more attempted. I was quite lucky. Um, the last sort of crossword book I needed in the second half, because I still need one crossword book to have them all. Um, but the uh, one of the ones I needed recently, it came from um, a chap who is a puzzle collector, and he had a double in his a double of it in his collection. He let me have it for a very reasonable uh, ten pounds, which. I believe it was that one there, which was actually well worth it because, you know, the next cheapest ones you can see online are about £25, and that's much, much more than I want to pay for an old crossword book. So I think I did all right there. And that particular collector, um, I don't think he watches this channel, he watches my other one though, but he, um, I believe he compiles crosswords and puzzles for a living. That's one of his... Uh, jobs. Uh, does it for the Guardian or the Sunday Times, one of those. Now this one here, that's the original Penguin printing and this is the uh, the Penguin Modern Classics edition of Antic K. I do like Aldous Huxley. So I'm not sure when this became a Penguin Modern Classic but it's in the uh, the nice um, Modern Classics library so that's why I picked this one up. Um, they're like a little subgenre within Penguin and I've started picking more and more of these up because I think they are Really, really beautiful. FL Green, odd man out. Already got a big spider web or something in the corner. <laughs> this one seems to be printed on much lower quality paper, which is slightly surprising. Let's see, in the remnants of a price of some sort there. glue at the top required just a smidgen to uh, sort out that little little bit there it's only a little bit but that could so easily catch and just get worse so slide them in there These ones with uh, they're slightly bigger books, so they have the uh, the double penguin penguin doubles. This one's really nice, been unread pretty much by the look of it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, these are all pretty nice copies. 
bits of debris coming out of these as they're being flicked through, but that's sort of normal, really. And there we are, a little uh, card there explaining about the double volumes, which all of these have been. These are all like big, thick double volumes. And later on, these double volumes would come in dust wrappers as well. Although they're pretty, pretty scarce. Pretty ropey copy of what's probably quite a common book, <laughs> Cakes and Ale. So I think um, I'll pop this one on my upgrade list. This is, uh, it really stands out as being quite grubby, that one. So 651, Cakes and Ale, Somerset Morn. On the upgrade list you go. It's a nice one. Classic, classic crime. A big M191. So once again, I wonder if that's someone recording when they last read it. So January 1991. But we like Raymond Chandler. A bit of classic. <sighs> classic crime. Is this uh, 1949 yet? It's still 1948, that one. My Life in Hard Times, Thurber. Very thin little volume here. Obviously he was the cartoonist, wasn't he, Thurber, as well. Oh, and that, I thought it was a nice one. That one's another one from the Harry Arnold collection. Um, remember I mentioned those last time we did some penguins. He was uh, a penguin, he worked for Penguin. He was one of the warehouse men right from the very early days and uh, he kept one of every single penguin as they were published and that's from uh, his collection when it went under the auction under the hammer our auction and uh, the dealer who bought them um, I bought a few of him at the time now look at this one this is gonna need some glue down there it's come right away from the spine first one we've seen that's needed such extensive gluing but that's okay we can easily fill up this little gap with uh, some Pritt stick. the cover but no bother so I need a little bit down the bottom there Hmm. Yeah, so this book's seen a bit of action, hasn't it? But I think that's enough glue. So we should be all right to uh, glue that right back in quite nicely now. Yeah, there we are. Let's save that from getting any worse. going to take a, an hour or two to really set but we'll just leave it like that for now I think that'll be absolutely fine right then 6 of 55 dead reckoning guy's got four pounds 50 inside I definitely didn't pay that for it or was it 150 I don't know Oh, 
Nice copy though. So we'll give it that. Got a run of uh, crime ones now. The King is Dead on Queen Street. Requiem for Robert. And these are all sort of, you know, VG-ish copies, aren't they? But I do remember a time when these were very, very easy to pick up. Um, whereas now, you know, picking these off one by one off places like eBay is quite an expensive job. You know, you're going to need to, unless you get lucky and buy a big job lot, in which case you're inevitably going to be doubling up. Um, you know, these crime books are you know, like a five or a pop now, really. Um, in a lot of cases, and even then, you got to add on a bit of postage as well. And suddenly, they're like seven, eight pounds at the price of a brand new book. And admittedly, these are nice, old, and you know, potentially collectible. But even so, it sort of takes the fun out of it. That was one of the big reasons I got into collecting paperbacks was it was the poor man's hardback, and uh, you could collect stuff that you could never afford to collect in hardback. One of which was say, um. The James Bond books. I always wanted the James Bond, Ian Fleming first editions, but no way could I afford the thousands of pounds that they were going for, even back in the 90s. So I just went for the paperbacks instead. And uh, they were much easier to get a set of. And this is another one I'm going to put on my up list, upgrade list because it's got water damaged. So it's number 659, Death on Heron's Mare. Definitely an upgrade needed there. Because that is quite the worst for wear. Looks all right on the shelf, but you know when we've got it out there like that, it's not a sort of book you would enjoy reading. And that's sort of my test with these: is that the books need to be in a condition that um, you'd be happy to sit down and read them. Um, and I don't have the patience to read a really, really awful condition book. It needs to be, you know, at least decent, half decent condition. For me to go through and uh, and read it. <clears throat> well, here's another one with a bit of a, a bit of spine coming away. Must have been something to do with the glue that Penguin used back then, because a few of these have got these uh, spine issues. But we'll squeeze a load in again. So it's a very, very easy fix, but I don't want to pull the entire cover off. This is a much thicker book. The repair is even easier to do. But I see we also need a bit down the bottom of the spine as well. So I slide a little bit in there where it's got caught. There we are. And we'll squeeze that in and squeeze the excess out like so. Lovely. That sorted that that one right out, which is good news. Good part of that, a nice copy. Got some glue on my fingers now. Thankfully, with Pritt stick, you just sort of rub your hands together, and it does almost like evaporate. <clears throat> this is, feels like a nice, tight, robust copy. Yeah, that's all right. <clears throat> The Du Maurier's. Yeah, that's okay as well. Crossword mystery. So, definitely going to benefit from a sort of see the dust on top of these and we'll get to that in a minute of course but um some of these are never been 
dusted, of course. This is a nice copy. Very nice indeed. That's unread. Yeah, that's a that's a minter. Don't often see them in that great state. Phonies and ponies. This is 1950, this one's dated. It's got a, some pencil again inside. T12 first, but then the price has been very badly rubbed out. Not nice and neat like we do it. There we go. Penguin 666, Defy the Foul Fiend. This is a nice, nice mint copy of this one. Slightly misprinted on that page. Apart from that, it's a minter. Lovely. Dancers in Mourning. Two pounds fifty inside there. And this is the uh, reissue of Dances in Morning, but it's got the, uh, the illustrated cover by Abraham Games. So uh, Dennis Piper did the actual illustration, but it was under the artistic direction of Abraham Games. This is a reprint, but part of that uh, illustrated jacket series. Yeah, 1958. This is 10 years later. Very nice. Indeed. Put that pile over there. Here's a big old one. Sons and Lovers by uh, D.H. Lawrence. Penguin published all the Lawrences, of course. Yes, it's got a little double volume insert. Smith of Smiths, another double volume. Nice copy of this one. Hmm, still saying 1948. Hotel Splendide. Cool. No bed for bacon. Look at this. Cover detached. <laughs> right, it's uh God blimey. Yeah, that's got rid of the uh, the debris, of which there was a lot. <clears throat> now we need to put be quite liberal with the uh, glue now. Although I am fairly near the end of this roll, so I'm hoping there's enough in there. Well, I'm going to need to um, gouge it out because we're near the end of the roll. But that's okay, that's easily done because this is a very, very straightforward 
repair. We're just going to do all the uh, all the edges right to the top. So nothing that we've not done before. Yeah, unusual to have so many. This is the third one now that's had a bit of a, a suspect uh, cover, you know, one that's virtually come off, and that is unusual. But all I can think of is, as we've seen with some other publishers, certain glues that seem to have been used haven't quite survived the ravages of time as well as others so if the book's not had a lot of use or wear or you know been read much then obviously it's got a better chance of surviving but sometimes even really really nice sort of mint and red copies suffer from having the, the spines fall to bits on us and it's just because of the glue that was used you know, in this case, 70 years ago when these books were first published. So, you know, they didn't expect these books to be, you know, being poured over 70 years later, did they? So uh, we can't blame the printers. But yeah, very, very worn sort of spine on this one so I think I probably will be adding this to my upgrade list as well because it's only a pretty easy to get fiction title so I wouldn't have an issue getting another copy which is in uh, a better condition than than that one really you know? and that's what it's come to now because I need so few penguins to finish the set I am all about upgrading the copies that I've got really as long as it's you know these tail end ones here, which aren't particularly mega money or anything. Now, what is this? <laughs> That's hidden there a long, a long time. We'll have a look at that in a minute. That's hidden there a long time as a bookmark. I can't believe I've never found that great thing before. Another one with some vintage dates on. This is 1248, 17. So I guess December 48 was when they read this book. All right, what was this? H.B. Cawthorn Esquire, Arrow Villa, High Lanes in Hale, Cornwall. London Postmark. If undelivered, return to IPCS. I wonder what IPCS was. But nothing of interest inside. It was literally just a, an, an old envelope. So uh, sadly, nothing of uh, great importance. Now we're pulling the last pile over here. So looking for a bluebird in a very blue a blue covered book so on the whole these have almost all been 1948 stroke 1949 this little era that, era that we're looking at today and you just get an idea of how many penguins is going to be to go through them all an awful lot so as i run out of other book series that have already been cleaned we'll have to ramp up our coverage of uh, Penguin and Pan, because I've got so many to get through, thousands of books. But I'll mix it up as good as I possibly can. Oh, here's another one from the Harry Arnold collection. Lovely to see. Got a bit of a faded spine, as so many of these um, ones do. The reds and the pinks do tend to uh, fade with any exposure to sun. Getting 
this one. This is uh, Charles Lamb and Elia, edited by J.E. Morpurgo. So you've probably heard of Michael Morpurgo. Well, that was uh, his dad. Michael Morpurgo at Warhorse, of course. And married Penguin founder Alan Lane's daughter, one of them. And this one's also from the H. Arnold collection. So I reckon I must have ended up with about 10 from that, that brilliant collection, which is pretty cool. The Oregon Trail. Nineteen forty-nine. This one, nice, be a beautiful copy of these. And this one's a little bit more the way. Henry Purcell got quite a bit of foxing on. From that, it was okay because I've changed this board to the black one for today's video, you can really see the bits and pieces and debris that's fall, <laughs> fallen out of some of these books. This one's had some tape on it by the look of it, so this is no good. This is probably, yeah, this is gonna go on my upgrade list. So William Corbett, 680. This has had some uh, tape on it at some point. Someone's put a cover on that one. How very dare they? 681. These are very, very easy to get replaced. You know, at least the non-crime ones are very cheap to cheap to pick up. Anything past number 500 is uh, reasonably priced, except I would say the Agatha Christie's. They're always going for a bit more because she's so collectible and the crossword books. And then general crime, a little bit more, like a pound or two more, like 350 a pop. But general fiction, really 253 quid. Any more than that, I hold out and wait. So we're going to start a run of Agatha Christie's, and I think a lot of the, well, not a lot of them, but I reckon over half of the ones we're about to see, I have already got upgrades in the wings, which I only recently picked up. So I'm going to clean these if they need cleaning, as good as possible. And then I'll, um, the spares I'll put into my box. Now I know I picked up an absolute minter of this one, even better than the one that I've got here. So um, this one's probably going to end up going on to eBay because um, I'm going to do a little lot of Agatha Christie Penguin Firsts. She is a super collectible author, even more so, it seems, recently. She's got so collectible. Uh, I guess it's a case of you'd need to be a very rich person to be able to even contemplate collecting Agatha Christie in first edition. And even then, you'd have to wait a long old time um, to find all the books because they, it's not like they're all out there. you just got to pay. They're, they're not like that. And that's a bit like vintage penguin collecting you just have to wait for the books to turn up on the market but it's definitely possible to collect Agatha Christie in vintage paperback and uh, you know generally speaking most books are out there once again there'll be a few which will be you'll have to wait to find but generally they're all out there this has got a little bit just a little bit down the bottom of the spine here I'm going to squeeze that in This was part of a run of 10 Agatha Christie's that um, Penguin published simultaneously. So there's a million of her books. Each one had a 100,000 print run. So that she was an immediate million seller, although she was already by that point. But you get the the idea. And uh, it was so successful, these particular 10, that Agatha Christie allowed Penguin to publish another 10 next year. And these were all published in association with the... Uh, the Collins Crime Club, and they've each got a new introduction by Christie, which is brilliant. It's like a two-page introduction specifically for the Penguin Editions. So those particular ones are quite, I believe, quite highly sought after by Christie collectors. And uh, I have done a video on Christie in Vintage Penguin because I do have them all, but 
um, I might just do a video where I read perhaps some of the introductions because I think they'd be uh, really fun to have a look at from that particular batch of 10. So I am glad that some of these are not perfect because I know literally in, in the next week or so I'll be able to have all my uh, replacement copies and I'll be able to have a good look at them and see which ones were best. But my suspicion is the ones I picked up, which were predominantly real minters, are, uh, are going to be better copies. I just can't remember which ones I got. <laughs> That's going to need a bit more glue, so let's dig that out now. Right, slide just a little bit. I haven't got much left of this particular glue stick, but we got enough just to slide a little bit along the edge here. It doesn't need much. Mainly down the bottom and the top. Just about going to have enough to do this one, I think. Thankfully, I buy these Pritt sticks off Amazon. And I buy them like literally like five at a time, packs of five at a time. So I'm never really out. I've had a few collectors tell me fairly recently that they've been loving these videos and it's prompted them to go and uh, clean their own books and that's really good because it's given the books another like little lease of life and I don't like to see books go in the bin I don't think anyone does really you know um, particularly when it's a nice collectible author like Agatha Christie because there's nothing there's really nothing wrong with that it's just this spine this old glue is you know 70 year old glue has uh, just dried out over the years and uh, we've just fixed it. I said it'll take a couple of hours to set properly but that's all right. There we are, that's fine. Seems a pretty nice one on the face of it. Power of the end house. So I was at Hay and Y, Hay and Y, a few months back, and there was a, a crime bookshop there. I've made a crime specialist, but their vintage Agatha Christie's were all like these ones, were like a ten or a pop, even if they were in a reprint. And uh, their uh, first editions were well, they didn't have any. Basically, they'd all all gone. So whether they'd sold them online, possibly, I'm not sure. Well, there we are. So that's all the books repaired as best we can. Next step then is we're going to give them all a very good brush. Right then, so here's the first little batch and uh, sadly it's uh, decided to rain outside. I'm here in the studio of course where I do all my cleaning. But you'll be pleased to hear when I move books from the studio to the house. I don't leave them in the studio overnight or anything. Uh, because it's only basically a, a reinforced glorified shed but it is, <laughs> it is it does the trick but i uh, i transport books from the, the studio to the uh to my home in comic boxes which are really really good because you can sort of fit two two rows of paperbacks on top of each other so great and i put a lid on so uh, 
there's no chance of them ever getting wet, which is the uh, would be terrible. <sighs> wow, look at that first lot. What a, a difference already! Incredible. <sighs> so that's good news. So we're off to a good start. I'll grab a little handful each time. As expected, quite a bit coming off these. And it's obviously the uh, the top edge is uh, is the worst. That particular crossword book was uh, not in great. Oh, the yellow one rather. Scowl and other papers. It wasn't a crossword one, but that was the one where they were really quite quite dusty but I mean this process doesn't take too long and it's definitely worth doing What a mess it makes. <laughs> Some dirty books there. Very, very dusty indeed. Let's pull the second part out. <clears throat> I suppose if these have never been done and they are, you know, 70 years old, then it's to be expected, isn't it? It's as simple as that. This particular batch weren't so bad, so swings and roundabouts. Now I promise to you I'm not adding rain effects, it is definitely quite wet out there. And I'm sure you can hear it in the background. But 
hopefully it doesn't spoil it for you. Oh, now after the rain, the seagulls are out. <laughs> Absolutely stacks of dust coming off the tops of these. Incredible. <laughs> Nuts. But that's okay. That's okay. That is why we're doing this. very dusty today.
good. So I hope you have enjoyed looking through this particular batch of penguins. There's uh, some really nice books in here and uh, it's a good period in penguin history in my my opinion and one of my sorts of favourite periods as well. Certainly uh, a few books have really really benefited from the treatment which is always good news. That's why we do it. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up and do please uh, leave a comment if there's anything you particularly enjoyed. If you've not already, do please hit that subscribe button. Nice to grow the channel. And next week I shall see you again with another video. I haven't quite decided what it's going to be yet, but uh, rest assured I'll come up with something groovy for us to have a look at. So until then, thank you very much for watching today. And I'll see you again soon.